Greetings, friends. It's an honor once again to welcome you back to Rick's Garage. What you see before you is my brake lathe. I'm getting ready to turn a rotor on a 2010 Ford Fusion. The reason I'm showing you this is I wanted to talk to you about eliminating vibration marks or chatter marks on the rotor. It's a pretty common problem. Now, I'm not going to get into preparing the rotor and the setup of the machine. I covered that on a previous video, and I'll link it at the end of this video. Now, first of all, you want to take every precaution to eliminate the chatter marks or vibration marks. First of all, I've gone to the trouble of setting the silencers. All of these lathes should have come with the silencers. And they're little rubber discs that you can uh, put onto the side of the rotor, each side of the rotor. And they call these silencers. And this is one uh, device that helps uh, eliminate the vibration. The other precaution I've taken is pretty standard. I've put a weighted belt around the rotor. Now, some of your back rotors are very thin. They're not thick enough to put one of these on. But if it's possible, uh, it's a good idea to add your weighted belt. That helps uh, uh, reduce the amount of uh, vibration you're going to get. So having taken the precaution of adding the weighted belt and setting my silencers, uh, we're now ready to start to turn this rotor. Now, I've already done the scratch test uh, in the previous video that I'll link to the end of this one explains how to do that. But you can see my two scratches are uh, nicely parallel with each other. So that means that my setup is good. So now I'm going to set the zero on the machine. I'm going to bring this insert in until it just starts to nick the rotor. Right there. And I'm going to lock it. I'm going to do the same for the outside, just until it starts to touch the rotor. Bring it in oh so slowly, right there. And I'm going to lock it there, and that's going to be my zero. Now, I don't... I don't know how well you can see the graduations on this thing, but I'm going to prevent this outside knob from turning, and I'm going to bring the inside knob in until it says zero. And there is zero, and I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Bring it in until it says zero. So now I've set my zero. So now I'm going to slowly crank the uh, lathe out. And um, what I'm attempting to do now is cut that ridge that's on the end of the rotor. Now I'm going to put it on a very slow feed here. The actual finish feed just to cut any ridge that's on the rotor. On the inside it doesn't look like there is a ridge at all. On the outside there appears to be a ridge, so I'm very slowly feeding outward now to try to cut that ridge. There it is. I'm hitting that ridge on the outside. Okay, there wasn't much of a ridge on this rotor, so that's good. Now I'm going to crank it in to my starting point, and if there's a ridge on the inside, I'll take it out. Alright, so I've reached my starting point. And I'm going to make my first rough cut. Now, generally, you want to take about four thousandths per cut on each side. That's taking off eight thousandths off the rotor to begin with. We have about eighty thousandths to work with here. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my uh, 
dial. Each graduation is worth two thousands. So I'm going to loosen my locking nut and I'm going to move it in so it's taking off four thousandths. I'm going to loosen my locking nut on the other side and I'm going to move that in so I'm taking off four thousandths. And now I'm going to do my first rough cut. Now generally you do not Generally, you do not get any chatter marks on your rough cut, and I'll explain to you why once the cut is finished. So as you can see on our first rough cut, the rotor cleaned up quite nicely. There really wasn't much run out to it. Now the reason we did not get any chatter on the rough cut, and generally you don't get chatter on the rough cut, is because the rough cut feeds a lot faster than the finish cut and any machinist with any kind of experience will tell you that in order to avoid chatter or vibration marks you've got to make the insert work harder that's a mistake that a lot of people don't understand they think when they're getting vibration or uh, chatter marks that they need to slow the feed or reduce the depth of the cut and that actually makes it worse if you don't take a deep enough cut say less than four thousandths it'll cause the inserts to overheat the cutting of the metal actually cools the uh, inserts on these cast rotors so we've made a pretty good uh, first cut and the rotor almost cleaned up now what i want to do is i'm going to make my finish cut now and because it's a finish cut and it's going to be feeding a lot slower and remember i said you have to make the insert work i'm going to take six thousandths off instead of four thousandths on the finish cut that means i'll be making a heavier cut and the inserts will be working a little bit harder and that should be enough to reduce the possibility of a chatter so i'm going to wind this back in and i'm going to take a full six thousandths for my finished cut. Okay friends, the inserts are reaching the center of the rotor. If we're gonna get vibration marks, it's gonna to start to occur now. What's happening is as we approach the outer part of the rotor, the rotor speed picks up, thereby reducing the feed per revolution, putting less pressure on the inserts, resulting in the possibility of vibration. Okay, as you can see, we're approaching the end of the rotor and it's still cutting nice and quiet. We're getting a beautiful finish. I'll come back when we finish the cut. Okay friends, that's all I've got today. I just wanted to cover how to eliminate vibration marks on your rotor number one you set your silencers if so equipped add your weighted belt around the diameter of the rotor and make sure you take a good healthy cut six thousand some more on your finished pass these three things will go a long way to eliminating any kind of vibration marks or what they call a herringbone pattern on your rotor so i want to thank you very much for watching rick's garage before I go, I'll post that video on how to prepare the rotor and set it up on the lathe. And to your right will be a picture of my avatar in the form of my trusty German Shepherd. By all means, feel free to click on that should you wish to subscribe. So thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you all very, very soon.